Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Bit of a long one today, as Grim Reaper and I are teaming up against Maple Syrup and Mist on Wansan Harbor. Now, both of our opponents are fielding motorized decks. This is something that you can see prior to the match beginning, so we were aware of that. And in response, I've brought a Blue Dragon's mechanized deck, so hopefully able to compete in the infantry grind. And Grim has brought, I believe this is Dutch German, so yes, we have the Dutch PWI transport, as well as the German Tiger. So uh, we are expecting our opponents to be able to move forward relatively quickly, and there's definitely some movement in that direction. Sokols and other helicopters moving forward here, but they're going to have a bit of a rough time as the AH-64 escorts and PHU Tiger will engage there, I think, in just a second. I also have Command Infantry headed over to Echo. We wanted to get a points advantage right off the bat if we could, expecting the motorized deck to have a pretty nice infantry grind. And yep, PH2 Tiger gets a kill. Also looks like some of the paratroopers probably a little, flying a little too close to the sun there as they do get taken down by bows. And uh, my own Block 52D does come in and take out that interceptor. So we do spot more infantry from Maple Syrup over here on the eastern side, and I'm just now getting my infantry over into the main town in Foxtrot. So the engagement there should be okay. We have Hachiku, Shikis, but ATGMs coming in will be pretty formidable there. And there's Formosa, able to stop my JSDF Rangers from getting into position. Now, I do have some Mistrals and Sochung Su, and we do get a pretty nice fight in here for a minute as just sheer amounts of supporting fire from Nanyan Shiki Gs and KAFVs is able to do some pretty excellent work. In the meantime, Grim still moving up and into Echo, but this was absolutely merciless. A quad stack of Legion, and it's not the Legion 90, but these guys, I mean, elite infantry of any of any capability are going to be a rough time, and I learned now uh, for the first time today that quad stacks, I mean, occasionally viable, maybe just because I'm a newer player, but Legion supported by quad stacks of UBA. These are, of course, the 15 strength uh, Chinese militia, which for 5 points, 15 strength is really meaty, and you can see it's pulling a lot of fire uh, that should be going in at the Lijian and is not. So these guys, I thought they were Lijian 90 at the time, I thought they had flame uh, weapons, not ATGMs, and so I am moving backward, but not nearly far enough. My Mistrals nearly get caught here, and I mean, UBA and Lijian are able to just decimate my forces, so I'm not even really microing over here in the east, just trying to get away from those Lijian, but not able to do it quickly enough, and UBA will be able to chew through a Hyusan Mistral, and my Gyeongbong have used all of their Napalm rounds to very little effect, getting no kills here on Mist's infantry uh, for quite a while. However, we have been able to chew through some of Maple's infantry, and between the engagement in Delta and Echo, it seemed like he was having a bit of a hard time here in this match, so enemy artillery is opening up, and I'm calling in some infantry reinforcements, but points were pretty tight as I did spend on an air superiority fighter as well, uh, which, I mean, it was handy, but winning the air fights and losing the ground fight is still a loss. So Nanayon Shiki G trying to move over to where I can bring those frag rounds online, and we are able to do that. So between them and the Sochung Su, Li Zhan are taking a bit of punishment for no gain here, which, I mean, hey, it was about time. Uh, but the Chinese player, well, I think it was Red Dragons, but um, missed, had excellent micro here, and we're not able to get them killed. So the Legion are retreating, UBA moving up in their stead to take that punishing fire, UBA as well moving up here. So four quad stacks of UBA for very cheap. That's 20 points per quad stack, well probably 40 including the transport, but still, I mean that's amazing. Uh, just meat for the grinder there. UBA are being chewed through as we have a quad stack of Stute Troopin from Grimm able to answer. And I know I don't quite say that as well as Stealth does, but uh, well, <laughs> I am not Dutch, uh, which should be pretty obvious. So, F4D, Peace Pheasant 1 coming in, and the bombing runs here were a little bit lackluster. I only really learned that in the late game. I'm trying to get the rest of those Lijian, uh, but they were already back and away, uh, trying to reinforce their strength. A little bit of fire coming in on the YP-408s, and Grimm's infantry takes a bit of punishment, but, I mean, Stute Troopin's still able to disembark, and he's very much saving my bacon here with sustained fire on the western side of the map. An MI2 row moving up from Maple, just trying to spot, and it isn't taken down a little bit too far out of range of the Flak Panzer Geppard. Uh, and now my KFVs and reinforcing infantry are starting to be in position. I've also brought more Gong Byung, as I figured the Napalm rounds would be instrumental here in winning this infantry grind. Scope 2 AMs proving the worth of their Mount Rupia uh, ATGMs, and I mean, more bombing runs coming in. This was really my biggest criticism, I think. Um, it's not that these got that much value right now, but they do eventually, and the sustained fire from, from bombers is worth something in a long match, uh, just like sustained fire from artillery is, 
The fact that those guys were alive for so long is a bit of an issue for our opponents. I do lose Hachikyushiki to Komendoshi, and I don't really have a good answer for those guys. Uh, so the Sochen Su trying to retreat, and I mean KFE is trying to move over as well. But it's a bit of a problematic situation, as we are able to secure a little bit in Foxtrot here, but still, I mean, this is trading at a disadvantage for quite a while. So, howitzers opening up once again, uh, at least I think those are howitzers, they could be mortars. Explosions look a little big for that though, so I think they're the cheaper howitzers with a little bit higher rate of fire. And now we have some cheap T-34 tanks coming in from the Chinese player as Komendozi are moving up. And Echo is being pretty much ignored um, at this point. My Bamboo were headed for Foxtrot, not Echo earlier, my apologies. Uh, and I'm calling in a CV just because we have been ticking at plus one, this is still a conquest game, not destruction. And if we can get a significant lead, even if we lose this fight eventually, it might be worth something. So, Komendoshi opening up, and UBA being attacked now by KFEs and Nanoyanchiki. Shouldn't be too long for this world, UBA also getting ground down by Stuttruppen and Sochen Su, as well as some cheap K200 transports. So, now I'm feeling a bit more confident, but here comes some MLRS fire uh, support from our opponent. And, I mean, stunning his own UBA isn't great, but with the aim time that was probably called in significantly before... Uh, when that position was still held by our troops, not theirs. Komendosi get a little bit too close here to pretty excellent uh, firing concaves from Blue Dragons, and this is what Blue Dragons mech is supposed to do, right? You sit back, uh, your infantry takes the grind, and your vehicles help you out. So Legion 90 getting stunned by that bombing run is pretty nice, panicked. Five strength left, sorry for the sirens again. I swear every time that happens, they're not coming for me, I am okay. Uh, but it's just the consequence of living in a city. Um, it's going to happen day or night, pretty much whenever I decide to record. So, Gung Gung moving up, Sochen Su moving up, and those Lijian have bitten off a bit more than they can chew here. Finally, uh, getting a couple kills, I think. Nope. And they're back. So, missed again with excellent micro. The infantry are stunned, but still able to transport between towns, which is a little weird. Komendosi moving up again and shooting at my KFVs. These guys have done excellent work for taking out my fire support. But Suju uh, Buntai are able to get some fire here. It won't be a winning fight against Komendosi in the long run, but at least it will be something. So, things are coming down a little bit as we have sort of worn each other to exhaustion just a tad, and there's still a good uh, 20 or so minutes left in this game. It's going to be a bit of a punching match with more MLRS fire coming in and definitely doing more work than I'd expected to the Gyeong Byung and So Cheng Su. We have a Mankadi here, hopefully able to heal those guys once he's no longer stunned and there's more infantry coming in, quad stacks from Mist once again. Uh, I do ping this as defense as Bechotha's mech from Maple Syrup come in and kill these PWI tripwire units in the forest there. And there's not a ton defending an Echo, so Suit Troopin will be nice, but Nathra are not phenomenal. <laughs> They're, you know, Dutch militia. Um, and that will be a problem. Now we have howitzers opening up on the Suja Buntai's last known position, but there aren't that many buildings here for me to move to. Komodosi also probably trying to get some kills on K200s that, I mean, probably weren't worth it at this point. Komodosi with only five men left. Should probably have retreated and tried to heal himself. Mankati moving back a little bit, and I'm not sure why he's not healing things at this point. It might be one of those where the game still thinks he's moving, even though he's not. I have K1 and Nanionshiki. They're out in the open, which is not great, but I wanted something to answer. Um, the vehicles that I saw coming down there earlier, and now we have some uh, MLRSs of our own opening up on what I thought was the enemy position. As it turns out, he had actually retreated all the way back into his own zone, probably expecting some sort of support fire into the middle, but, you know, we do get some incremental value off of this as UBA are worn down by that. Uh, I don't really want to switch to neutral perspective just to keep the kills and losses at the end, but answering MLRS fire coming in, I mean, a KEFE off of that is... Okay, but not great. And Mortar Fire supporting against the Suja Buntai is able to get these last couple of Komendosi a bit of an edge. So we do have Answering Fire from an M752 Lance. This is Dutch Artillery, and I always love watching that work. So let's see if he can get any kills. Oh, look at that. It's just arcing through. So graceful. And did that get anything? Uh, a little hard to tell. I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So, I've pinged defense again, as I didn't really see much movement toward that over here, and now the Pechota are moving through that woods um, to probably the suspected CV site over in the, the rear town is, I guess, a common choice there. And Komendosi is still engaging against So Cheng Su, but we have managed counter cap, so Mitsubishi CV coming in and denying our opponents the plus one from Delta, bringing us back to a plus two as those Peace Pheasants singularly fail to kill Komendosi, uh, but dropping a couple bombs here that did have kind of okay effects, if memory serves. 
Um, I'm also bringing some KV-107s forward. These guys carry my own special forces, and they're trying to answer the ever-persistent Commandosi that we've been fighting in that area. Leopard Verkennings and PH-2 Tigers, but I mean, again, that's just UBI. That's five points. Uh, militia drawing out all of that nice fire support and pretty irreplaceable snebs unless this guy goes and spends some time back near our own farm. Uh, so pretty good work there. Only one singular Komandosi left and he is killed, I believe, shortly by Nani Shiki or the, yeah, looks like by the Socheng Su. So actually increased their veteran Su, which is pretty nice. More Gongbyung, uh, Gongbyung as well. Moving up, uh, trying to support the Socheng Su with those M202 Flash Napalm launchers. And I think we've had kind of an okay skirmish at this point. It was a little hard to tell in the early game. I don't think we had that many kills on Mist, at least not in the infantry fight, but his vehicles have certainly been getting punished uh, a little bit, and we're able to stabilize here at a plus two, which is very bad for our opponents, very nice for ourselves, as we round the 200 point marker and near uh, halfway to victory, right? So unfortunately, Strop 2's excellent range against helicopters is going to be opening up on my KV-107, but we have some Kutai-90 now on the ground here, hopefully able to support against any sort of infantry push there. And yeah, this is just sloppy play on my part. The KV should have already moved back. Suja Buntai also trying to retreat to uh, restock and replenish their strength. Now some short range MLRSs. These are Napalm MLRSs opening up. And I mean, I guess it got some good damage done. I'm not really sure why sometimes it looks like there's strength missing, but it's still a full strength squad. So my Young Young are showing 10, but two pips of strength are worn through. So I'm a little confused by that. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's some internal hit point value there or something I really just don't know about. And we do see a CV moving forward there, but this one's capped, so that means that there's two. Um, important distinction for later on. And I'm calling in now defense here as these OAT 64 c is moving up. Uh, five of them is pretty nice, and my K1 is trying to dodge all of those cheap, cheap ATGMs, because even if they can't get you in one hit, well, you know, volume quality has a quantity... <laughs> Quantity has a quality all its own, however I am trying to get a couple single shots in, but that's a little ambitious here. Killing two of the oats is not worthwhile uh, in terms of losing a K1, and there's something big and scary coming out of not these oats, but actually this town as well, so I did lose my K1 there. And cheaper flock Panzer 15 point vehicles would have been a better solution. So a MiG bomber coming in, dropping those four 500 kilogram bombs on the 912A, and that is going to be a little bit painful, but I did have a Biho, and it looks like... Not a lot of good work there uh, done, so an answering F-16 does try to come in, but unfortunately that plane gets out. Pakota finally engaging with Nathra, which is sort of what we'd expected this whole time, as there was no answering defense from Grimm over on the western side. Um, it's not like he's not doing anything. He was helping me survive in, in Foxtrot, which is very much appreciated. And my new reinforcements here got absolutely smacked, so two double squads of Sochung Su. There comes one shot, second shot, and look at that. Damn. I was trying to get them up into the town and out of danger, and instead I got them nearly all killed. So what was supposed to be a nice uh, reinforcing backbone of Socheng Su, uh, it didn't really do anything at all. So meanwhile, KFVs are going to be moving up. I'm trying to get a little bit of an engagement here um, in the open field near Charlie. Sometimes that can be a good spot to have uh, fire support, but an OAT 64C makes it past my Kutai. I was really pissed. I didn't know why they weren't shooting. I think they were repeatedly losing it and gaining line of sight. Uh, but that allowed the enemy to scare off a Mitsubishi CV. More importantly, see that it was one of those cheap jeeps and its position. So they have a pretty good idea of where that is. Uh, JSCF Rangers also securing on this side, and I was kind of wary of more Komandosi and infantry in that western part, western forward part of Delta, which could be a pretty big problem. So Grim did launch an attack beacon here as we have spotted their FOB, so that's from, I think, one of the bows with, uh, you yeah, know, very good optics there. It's pretty nice. Uh, of course, defended against other helicopter attack. And here come a couple more bombers, answered, of course, by a Block 52D, which is a seed plane. But it's a seed plane with very excellent ASF missiles as well. And we even get a cheeky kill on the HQ-61A. So these were brought in, it looks like four of them, by the Chinese player as an answer to our earlier air dominance. But one of them goes down that quickly. However, I do lose the Mitsubishi CV, and that is... I mean, that's 100 points right there, which is a pretty steep price to pay. And Granant and Ma are engaging my Kutai, which, I mean, hey, they did better than I thought they would. Of course, 15 points each versus 30 points each, so... I mean, unless they get a kill, it maybe isn't all that worth it, but they ground through about half of my Kutai's strength, which, hey, that makes sense, right? 30 points attacking into 60, you get 30 points worth of value, which... Not everyone can do that on the elite trained uh, Kutai 90. So Gong Gong moving up and using those flash rounds, trying to injure some UBA here as well as draw fire. 
the KAFVs, and it does in fact draw some supporting fire from the Deckungsgruppe, but my Gungbyung are out of Napalm Rounds again, just because the sheer number of bodies in here. KAFV is finally able to open up, and I mean, hey, we're we're getting some forward progress, which is nice. And the Pichota engaging in a H-64 escort, not the best engagement for us, because I, helicopters do weird things in woods where they can't use all of their all of their weapons, but I mean, the main gun on the escort does seem to be enough for it to survive. More LRS is coming in, just absolutely pounding this position. I lose my cargo that I just called in, and K200 is fortunately able to shield a quad stack of Gungbyong that are moved up sort of as a punitive force here, just trying to get anything I can to chew through those infantry. Nani on Shiki G moving up as well, but again, that big ATGM team in the town here able to deny me that tank, so a bit of sloppy play there on, on my part. Grin's definitely having the the better game as it stands right now. Stu Trippin moving up, fighting with a Legion 90, which is going to be a really tough one as those FHJ Napalm launchers chew right through these Stu Trippin. Look at that. There were nearly 30 of them, that was 13, and they're moving back, trying to get away from those infantry killer elite infantry. Um, oh, that's a mouthful. My MLRSs are opening up again, however, and this time to pretty good effect as it is concentrated on the actual enemy position here. KFE is moving up as well, and uh, I did briefly spot an SPW from Maple Syrup, so we have an idea now. I I didn't remember during the game that there was one over here. I thought maybe it had gotten killed, uh, but we do spot their CV, and it is just a, a relatively cheap uh, vehicle there, so one armor does beat zero, but it still won't be too resistant. To too much fire. Gungbung engaging with UBA, but unfortunately they are panicked. Um, however, we should start to see those flash rounds opening up soon. I'm not really sure why they weren't. Uh, town to town should be well within range, and it looks like they're getting stuck aiming? That's really strange. Huh. Uh, yeah, no, aiming but not firing with the napalm rounds, and there we go, finally online. I'm not sure what changed there, because it was still the same static engagement. Uh, yeah, a couple shots going in. It looks like mostly misses as the UBA are just soaking up all that all that fire. Panzergren moving up. Ah, jeez, more sirens. I do apologize. I, uh, I had problems of living in a city, as I said before, but uh, such is life, and this is a long enough recording that uh, well, hopefully there'll be a minimal disturbance. So, cargo unfortunately captured by the enemy here as they take the absolutely stupidest path uh, to reinforce. I thought they were coming over here. Uh, but instead of going, you know, the back way, they went the front way and then got intercepted by Lijan and UBA. My Gung Gung getting killed here, a little bit underperforming for how I thought they would in the town, but uh, we were able to get some decent damage on the Lijan 90, and now we have Leopard for Kennings and Martyr 2s opening up, trying to, well, trying to keep this uh, this defense alive here as the Chinese players are pushing in again. Peace Pheasants opening up, but the Lijan able to get out, and this is really just going to be punishing UBA and a couple of uh, my allies too trooping, so apologies for that there, Reaper, uh, my bad. And look at all the MLRS fire, I mean, this is it proved to be way more effective for town-to-town -to -town fighting than than any of the bombs that my Peace Pheasants kept dropping. Mitsubishi CV coming up to replace the one that was lost in Delta, and we have about 10 minutes left in this game, so I'm going to speed things up a little bit as this infantry grind just continues to be just completely devastating. So and then uh, a lance opening up there as well, but it's a lot of supply wasted per shot, and it's not really the most effective way of killing a fog, so howitzers are a bit more supply effective there. MiG does get lost to an F-16A MLU as a seaplane flies above, uh, above from Grim, and we've relatively well taken out their air defenses, so I get a little bit, uh, I, I'd say, I'd say, um, unsporting, <laughs> I guess. So an OH-6D moving up, but does get taken down by air defenses. However, my uh, Kutai-90 should be able to touch down there on the eastern side. We'll take a look back at them here in just a minute. So, BTRs are getting pounded by uh, artillery now, and things are are actually stopped. So they have counter-capped Echo. Uh, Delta is counter-capped, Bravo and Charlie capped for our opponents, while Golf and Foxtrot held for the Blue 14. Um, but this was a pretty easy guess. So. Uh, usually a counter cap is there. I've had a bit more success just being a, a little patient, moving them down to here, somewhere a little bit less predictable, and you can get a pretty good infantry screen on that side without having to engage the town, so it can be a, a pretty robust way of keeping things safe. The HQ-61A is moving forward, trying to get a, a shot on that uh, bow. My seaplane's moving in, and evac ordered on the KF-16C, but here, one missile away, and... Two in return does get a near kill on the 52D, so that's evac ordered right away, not trying to stick around. So probably, no, looks like the Nevo didn't fire. 
Um, a little bit of unfortunate luck there. If that second missile had landed from the HQs, that would have been a dead plane. So more howitzer fire coming in, trying to snipe the Mitsubishi CV, and one shot does get close enough to panic him, so that was not exactly great. But now I have JSDF Rangers and Suja Buntai moving forward for the first time in Delta, uh, trying to push away from the edge of this zone. And we have confirmed that there are some enemy uh, positions here on that corner of Echo. So a bunch of AMX Pre's moving forward and Martyr 1A3 providing fire support and those Milan F2s should make short work of an SBW-80. Looks like only one landed, but it was enough. So uh, Command Infantry at that point being retreated as Stoop Troopin and uh, AMX Pre's are moving up into the woods. Will be a good decision, better to not lose that uh, valuable that valuable um, unit of infantry. So I'm tired of these guys getting away. I called in two bombers. And both of them weren't enough because by this point in time, by the time those bombs land, those Lijon were actually back in this town right here. So <laughs> I had a bit of egg on my face for that uh, maneuver. My last unit of Gong Gong engaging with them, but disengaging because that's not going to be a good fight. And you can really see, you know, most of my infantry have been killed in this long attrition sort of sort of battle here. MI2 row is spotted and it's spotting my Fiat 6616 and I did lose another command vehicle to persistent howitzer fire so infantry would have been a better choice here but the problem is putting them in that town is extremely predictable and you can see it's been shelled to hell and back which probably would have killed a five strength command infantry as well so a bit of damned if I do, damned if I don't. Now the Kutai 90 are making it forward and I'm trying to get them into this position because I, I wanted them up forward, but these ZTZs are 80 point tanks and they do engage the Kutai. It's a lot of punishing fast fire uh, from those ZTZs. We do get, it looks like, two Gar Carl Gustav shots off and two of those 80 point tanks go down, but so do my Kutai 90. So 60 point loss there for me, 160 point loss there for my opponent. Wasn't really the infiltration that I'd wanted into Alpha, but it was at least worthwhile. And this is a bit of a guess in the dark here, so Grim has. Um, I guess shot out a couple other places in Alpha and decided that their CV is probably in the back part of that industrial section. Uh, his infantry, meanwhile, are able to kill recon infantry here and push back out of Echo, so we have recapped that. Uh, and if my CV in Delta hadn't died, we would still be ticking. As it is a little under 300 points with 17 minutes left, technically in theory to play as it stands more about 5 minutes left. Um, as we do start to get a couple of precision kills. So howitzers opening up and doing excellent counter fire, finally able to take down some of the Chinese artillery and a bomber actually coming in, suspecting I had more there in the back, I guess, but a little bit of a wasted uh, bombing run as my Kutai were entirely killed by those ETZs. So MLU comes forward, does get a nice kill on that helicopter, and this is just grabbing points when and where you can. A cluster bomber coming in as well, and this is really unfortunate, all of those nice new shiny 80 point tanks coming in and getting cluster bombed right off the bat. It's not enough to kill them, but it is enough to weaken them, and that had to have been adding insult to injury. So at this point I have Sotrim Su and Quad Stacks, I have a single unit of Gung Yung, I have KFVs, and Maple does surrender. So uh, that was in response to the Lance hitting and killing his command vehicle in Alpha. Um, never really the way that you want to see the game go, it is you know usually better to see it uh, go to its conclusion, whether that's in points or whether that's in time, um, but understandable, sometimes games are just a little too far gone, and Maple did have definitely the worst end of that uh, engagement in Delta and Echo, particularly at the start, can be kind of hard to recover from, uh, despite your ally doing decently well. So uh, at this point, his command infantry were killed on the western side by Grim, and we can see the CV and Bravo is moving back to Alpha to recap there, um, but this ends up being a bit of a problem, so Whenever you're trying to resecure your home zone, it is nice to do that quickly, but try not to be too predictable because if it's a short path and a short time, we're going to guess, well, it's somewhere along the edge here between where the CV was pulled from, Bravo, and where it went to, which is Alpha. So it could be an easy artillery position for um, something to respond. We do also have eyes on the HQ-61As a little bit too far forward as Maple, uh, sorry, Maple did surrender and missed is probably a little overwhelmed with uh, getting all of those new units relatively quickly. Li Zhan moving forward and then quickly retreating as they run into a wall of Sochung Su, and the 80 point tanks do make it up and into uh, Delta. I guess probably just trying to overwhelm this position as a, a last ditch sort of thing. My defense there had never been all that capable, and finally able to kill that PTRS Conquerors team, but uh, KFVs and Rangers are going to struggle against these guys as the sheer amount of frontal armor is enough to deny the KAFEs a nice kill. We do get a couple weapon jams there, so I mean that is that is okay, but it's not all of the tanks. 
And we do finally get a kill from the JSDF Rangers. Only three men left in that squad, though, is a little rough. Um, and I should have had something supporting, but I'm not sure that I did, as I'm trying to get my Sochung Su up here uh, to engage in Charlie. And the reason for this was uh, I have on the way, again, uh, Peace Pheasant 1, the second Peace Pheasant, also a seed plane coming in, killing those HQ uh, radar AA pieces before the Peace Pheasants do land their shots. And finally we get the UBA, finally we get the Legion with a bombing run, so <laughs> at last worthwhile. And Sujo Buntai moved up, we're able to get the ZTZs on that end. Uh, there are a couple minutes left in the fight, but it's mostly just Mist hanging on for dear life as his elite infantry are finally taken down, and uh, we are able to finally get an offensive here. A couple units of Feebao coming in, but uh, one of them does go down to a quick response from double KF-16Cs, and he hasn't yet been able to recap Bravo, so things are still taking out a plus three. That's 400 points, and I think he actually does wait out the entire game, which is nice. Always uh, good to see the... the uh, well, you may have me beat, but I'm not dead yet, sort of attitude. Um, I am not always able to do it myself, as it can be very disheartening to be on the receiving end of something like this, knowing you really don't have much of a chance to get back in this game. A couple K1s moving up, and So Chung Su anchoring this position, arguably moving forward finally. Another Feebao coming in, and I do have a Biho that <laughs> takes it on the chin, unfortunately, but a block, uh, block 10 from my ally Grim is able to come in and one shot. Two shots, unfortunately, does miss the Feebao, SU-27SK, coming in to answer, one shot is a hit, and the Block 10 does barely survive, it looks like, nope, does go down, uh, but we do get the SU-27SK uh, as well, so my own ASF wasn't quite early enough to answer the first bit, but now we have a couple B-5 bombers coming in as Charlie is just overrun entirely uh, by IFVs and those B-5s, I have no answer to them. My air defense here was taken out by a seed plane, uh, my interceptors are on cooldown, and that's a lot of bombers uh, moving in toward Hotel, so there's nothing we can do about this. It was, I mean, is it going to win you the game? No. Was it funny? <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Uh, one of the B-5s does get uh, hit but not killed, and that's four B-5s, double availability of course because Maple has tagged out. And he's able to get my CV, able to get the Lance, able to get uh, some pretty good damage on the FOB. Oddly enough, my MLRSs do survive, uh, and it's not going to be enough to save him as we round the corner. Uh, 490 points, and quickly into the full 500 needed. So, good game to both Maple and Mist. Uh, the kills were pretty even, so 49.70 for uh, my own team, 41.20 for the, um, well, about 4,000, I guess, 4,100 for the Red 4 team of Maple and Mist. And you can see Grim definitely had a better game than I did, 3,000 points of kills to 2,300 losses, while I was much closer to 1,950 kills to 1,795 losses. Of course, a couple of those were the CVs that I lost, so that would be 220 points there. That didn't need to be lost, they were just, a, you know, sometimes sometimes Jeep CVs take it on the chin, and that's uh, really the only thing to say for it. However, the KF-16Cs did really excellent work taking out three HQ-61A Radar AA pieces and even getting a couple kills on planes. Uh, other standout units are probably the Hachi Kyushiki, usually a really reliable IFV, um, particularly for 25 points. You get a nice auto cannon, decent armor, and an ATGM, so all around pretty nice there. KFVs taking out Formosa was very nice. Was the problem with uh, Formosa or any sort of elite infantry that doesn't carry an anti-tank weapon because pretty much anything other than Formosa would have been able to kill the KFV and keep on moving. Uh, Nanagun G did okay, killing a Komandozi and providing fire support. Peace Pheasant 1 bombers finally able to kill a Legion 90 there at the very end, but really not the most value out of those. And the MSSRs did okay, but again, mostly kills on Militia there in the center. So Mist, I think if Mist and I did a 1v1 there, it would have been a short game in his favor. Uh, but, you know, 2v2s is why you have an ally. Uh, and I'm very grateful to Grim for that support. So that's all we've got for today. Thank you all for hanging around. We'll see you again real soon.